film is about the struggles of African Americans coming from Africa and all the way to Columbus, Ohio, where I'm from. Enjoy. When I was about eight or nine years old, I had an opportunity to go to a camp. It was a girls' camp, and I went for a week. And it, we did all the camp type things, swimming and campfires and learning to row a canoe on a, a little stream. And toward the end of the week, we always had a musical or a talent show. Well, this year that I went, they decided to have a minstrel show, which was a traveling entertainment group and they were, used to be all blacks, but at, when things were really tough, whites started doing them also. But they would burn cork and put cork on their face and call it black face. And that was, those got to be very popular in the minstrel shows. Um, well, they wanted to do that for us. We were going to have a minstrel show, but they told me that since, that I didn't have to put black face on because I was already that way mm. and I said what way I'm not black I'm brown so I insisted on putting cork on my face too to show we're all going to be black face I'm not black I'm brown yeah and I was only eight or nine years old I'm next folks <laughs> now I love those eyes that shine. oh I'm gone yes I'm gone with the love that's ever growing to the cone black mammy if I not a cent not a cent and my clothes are only lent all the same she'll think I'm just fine all behind the barn down on my knees oh, tell us what you heard I thought I heard a chicken sneeze ah, Polly, Polly, doodle, husband and I were looking for an apartment and it was in the early 60s and segregation and uh, unfair housing practices were quite common. And so I just asked people when I called inquiring about apartments if they accepted African Americans or blacks. This one man said, are you employed? He asked if we were employed and I told him yes. And he asked how many children we had, and I told him one, which we did at the time. So he invited me to come out and fill out an application and told me what kind of a deposit to bring. So I did that, and he was very friendly on the phone. When I got there, he gave me the application, but he was very uncomfortable. And I finally finished the application process, and he said, that he told me that it would be okay for a black family to be considered but he didn't know whether the residents would accept a mixed couple or not and I said what do you mean well looking at my daughter he thought that she was biracial and that I was married to a white man and he did he thought that might be a problem and he was very uncomfortable bringing it up but he was trying to spare my feelings, he thought. And I told him I didn't think we were interested. I started dating outside of my race when I was about 14, 15. And back in them days, not that it was that long ago, I was called some names, though, from the white people. So what names were you called? Uh, in Lover. At the time, I just ignored it because mm -hmm. I was doing my thing and I was happy doing what I wanted to do. So, influence your your family. How did they feel about it no, back in that time? Like, they didn't like it. They didn't like it at all. They would say, um, you know, that it wasn't right to date outside of my race and, um that it would be hard if I had a child to bring a child into the world uh, with a black dad and a white mom Mommy. that that child would have a really hard time in society as they grew up. Little did they know then that you know my daughter is thriving better than I am, better than I could ever hope to have her thrive and now I have a son that you know it's going to be fine, too. How did you deal with racism um, back in your day? 
Hmm. When I went to Johnson Park Middle School, um, that was my first encounter. Some kind of racist, some kind of racial stuff was going on there against the blacks and the whites, and I didn't even understand what was going on because I've never had to encounter that. Um, it was blacks against the whites, and then you know they had to do something with the split sessions and the kids and. I, I just didn't really understand it. I was younger. I have a dream that one day down in Alabama with its vicious racists, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification. One day right now in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream. who still doubts that America is a place where all things are possible, who still wonders if the dream of our founders is alive in our time, who still questions the power of our democracy. Tonight is your answer. Let those who've been told for so long by so many to be cynical and fearful and doubtful about what we can achieve, to put their hands on the arc of history and bend it once more toward the hope of a better day. It's been a long time coming, but tonight, because of what we did on this day, in this election, at this defining moment, change has come to America.